everybody, and look where I am. It's the Children's Chapel. It's so good to be here, but I miss you all so much, and I wish you were here with me. And I know we're not here physically, okay? We're not in here all sitting down and getting ready to hear Bible stories, but I hope you're with me in your hearts, okay? Your hearts and your spirit, just like Jesus, the Holy Spirit is in your hearts, filling you with love. Know that I love you and I miss you. But I hope you'll enjoy this time of worship back in our space online. Now, for those who have not been in our children's chapel, this altar is made from the original altar at St. Mark's. We took it, we made it smaller, and we put it in our children's chapel to remind us that we are bringing up the youngest members of our church in the life and faith of Jesus Christ. Now we always have our candles lit to remind us of what kids, huh? Yep, Jesus is the light of the world, okay? He lights our path and he guides our way. And we have the color green on our altar to remind us what season of the church here we in. We change the colors up from season to season, and this one is green. Think about other things that are green, okay? Grass, leaves, on trees, all things that grow. We are in what we call the Episcopal Church, we call ordinary time, the season after Pentecost, where we remember how the church grew. And the church grew because of people just like you and me. Now, will you pray with me right now? The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for this time we get to spend together. Although we are far away, we know we are close in spirit in our hearts. May this time together warm our hearts to continue us to share your love with our neighbors with all that we meet, so that they too may know your love. In your name we pray, amen. Now I got a special song to start us out this morning, and I can kind of see you might not be able to see it so well. So what I'm gonna tell you is we got a butterfly, okay, we got a robin in a tree, and we got a fish in the sea. And say, if I were a butterfly, Forgiving me wings. If I were a robin in a tree, I thank you, Lord, that I could sing. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd wiggle with me. We got just thank you, Father, for making me be. For you gave me a heart. I thank you, Lord, for my fine looks, and I just thank you, Father, for making me me. For you gave me a heart, and you gave me a smile, you gave me Jesus, and you made me a child. If I were a fuzzy, fuzzy bear, thank you, 
Lord for my fuzzy fuzzy hair And I just thank you Father for making me me For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile You gave me Jesus and you made me a child Thank you, Father, for making me me. You know what? We should do it one more time. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me a child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me me. That song. I hope you guys had fun with me, even though you're not here. But we'll be together soon enough. But I played that song this morning because our Bible story has to do with that. It's about creation. It's from the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And it's about God's creation. He created all those things like butterflies and fuzzy wuzzy bears. I wish I had some hair. <gasps> but he created all those things. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Okay, it's the very first story in the Bible from Genesis. And on the first day, God created light. <laughs> light. All right, God created light. And he said it was good. Okay, there was no more darkness. So God created light. And that was the first day. And what God said was, it is was good. Remember that. It was good. Now on the second day, <laughs> I bet you guys have been wondering why I had all this stuff here. On the second day, what God did was God made the clouds in the sky. Okay, he made the clouds in the sky and he separated the sky from the water, 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 water. Anybody go to the lake? Okay, love playing in the water. But on the second day, God separated the clouds from the water. You know what he said? It was good. All right, now the third day, the third day, okay, God said, let there be plants, okay? Let us have plants everywhere. And I got a bunch of seeds here and, oh, 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 oh. don't worry, don't worry. I, 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 I'm, I'm ready to take care of God's creation. I've got, you know, handy back, okay? To clean up all of this seed. But God created the plants, okay? And God said, ready for it? It was good. That was the third day. Now the fourth day, God said, let there be stars in the sky. Okay? He created all this majesty in the sky. You ever look through a telescope? He looked up in the sky and he said at the end after his creation, he said, it was good. Good. That was the fourth day. Now on the fifth day, God said, let there be fishies and birds. Anybody have these? <gasps> you play with them. These are some of the old bath toys that Andrew had, my son. We have the sharks and then we have the Yeah, well, it's not as good as I hope, but <laughs> the fish in the sea, okay? On the fifth day, he put all the fish and all the birds. And you know what he said when he was done with his creation? He said, it was good. It was good. Now on the sixth day, God created, ready, animals. Animals. Okay, I got all sorts of animals here. Whoa, I got the animals. Okay, God created animals. Got a little bunny. Boop, 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 boop. Created all the animals. 
Isn't he so cute? Isn't he so cute? We got a cute little doggy. Cute little doggy. Okay, he created all the animals. And then one of my favorites. <sighs> created all the animals. This is one of my favorite stuffed animals ever. I love it. Created all the animals, and I have no idea what this animal is, but it makes noises. <laughs> you probably can't hear me. He goes, let's talk. So, the sixth day, God created the animals. And he created us, us humans. And you know what he said? It was good. And on the seventh day, God rested. And that's a creation story, and it's the first creation story that I'm going to talk to you about today. And what it is, is a great story. Do I think it's a literal story, like God created the world and everything in it in six 24-hour days? No, nah, you may be saying, but what about the dinosaurs? Oh, dinosaurs. Okay, that's not really the point of the story, I think. The point of the story is it's a great poem that tells us about God and how God created us and God loves us and says, it was good and is good. So that's what it's doing. It's telling us about God loves us as his creations and say we are good. Now the second creation story that you're probably familiar with is a story about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, right? Adam is in the Garden of Eden. God creates this incredible garden and creates Eve so that Adam can have a partner and they can share love forever and ever in this perfect garden. All God says is, don't do one thing. Don't eat the fruit from one tree. One tree in the garden. That's all you have to do. Don't eat from that one fruit. And of course, Adam and Eve say, sure, of course. And they go about living in this incredible thing, giving thanks to God. Until one day, Eve is by the tree. And Eve is standing there and a snake, a snake, 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 comes up. Comes up beside her and says, why aren't you eating the fruit of this tree? And Eve says, well, God says I shouldn't eat this fruit. And the snake says, oh, but it's okay to eat that fruit. God knows that if you eat that fruit, then you'll know everything that God knows, and he doesn't want you to do that. So what does Eve do? <gasps> Eats the fruit of the one tree God said not to. And then immediately everything starts to go wrong. She's like, oh my gosh, I have no clothes on. Hides in the bush. And then she goes to get Adam because she didn't want to be alone. You know, she wants somebody else to mess up like her. So she gets Adam and she brings Adam over. And she says, Adam, eat of the tree. And Adam takes the fruit and Adam goes, <laughs> eats that fruit and doggone it. Everything goes, Bleh! okay? And he realizes that he doesn't have any clothes on and he's all upset. So they make fig leaves and they put them on and they... They go and hide in the bushes from God. Now God comes in the story and he knows that Adam and Eve had eaten the fruit of the tree. He says, why did you eat the fruit of the tree? And the first thing Adam does is throw Eve under the bus and says, no, 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 I, did, I wouldn't have done it. But Eve made me do it. Eve made me do it. <laughs> you know how you blame somebody else when you do something wrong? And then Eve immediately goes, no, no. The snake. It was just a snake. The snake made me do it. She didn't want to accept her own decision. Okay, her own decision to do the wrong thing. And what we call this is the first sin of the Bible. Okay, we call it original sin. And what that sin is, is that we humans thought that we knew more than God. God who created all of us. God who created all of us and said, it is good. They thought they knew more than God. Now, I bring this up 
Because I think we're still doing that today. I think there's a lot of people who think they know more than God. You may have heard about some of the protests going on. You may not understand. Okay? There are people who are marching and there's, you hear about this violence, which is really, really bad. But I want you to know why I think a lot of people are marching in protest. What they're marching in protest is about a man who thought he knew more, a police officer who killed a black man named George Lloyd. And whereas many things like this have happened in our country before, this one really got people up because there are so many of my, my good friends, my African-American friends, who are proud black men and women who have told me that they don't feel like they're good enough. They've been told by people, not everyone, not everyone, but there are people who have told them over and over again, just because of the color of their skin, okay, that they're not good enough. If you're told over and over and over again your whole life that you're not good enough just because you're black or you're a person of color, it makes you feel bad. And God doesn't want us to, know, to think that we're not good enough. All of us are good enough in God's eyes. In God's eyes, all of creation is something God loves and it is good. And see, in our gospel today, okay, the reading about Jesus from Matthew, the book of Matthew, Jesus says, I want you, okay, to go out in the world and make disciples, friends of me, Jesus, from all nations and all peoples, Jesus didn't say, I want you to only take the people who are white or only take the people who are smart or only take the people with money. He said, I want you to go to all nations and all peoples and I want you to make friends of mine. I want them to know my love. And when you love your neighbor and you share that love with your neighbor, Jesus is with you and it is good. I want you to know that you are good and all peoples and all nations, they are all good. And when we share God's love with everybody, then it is good. I love you and you are good and Everyone is good. Now, we're going to spend a little bit of time this morning in our prayers. We're going to lift up our prayers. So if you'll bow your heads with me, and fold your hands, let's pray. For the beauty and wonder of the earth and sky and sea, and will you say, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. For mountains and rivers, for birds and flowers, for trees and animals, we thank you, God. For our daily food and drink, we thank you, God. For our homes, families, and friends, we thank you, God. For St. Mark's and our country, we thank you, God. And for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, God. And I invite you in the comments to lift up any prayers that you have and put them in the comments and we will pray for them. And we do pray for all people of color that they feel the same love that God gave to all creation because we are all equal in God's eyes. For this we say, we thank you, God. Now we have a tradition in the Episcopal Church where we share God's peace and we usually share it with a handshake or a hug. But let's...
be able to do it right here through our words and our actions that we do with others. I say the peace of the Lord be always with you and you say in return and also with you. God's peace be with all of God's creation. And we've got a finger prayer that we always end on. It's like the five types of prayer. We start with our thumbs and we say, Glory to God as the angels sing. Thanks to God for everything. God forgive me as I forgive others. Bless everyone, my sisters and brothers. Last of all, dear God, bless me. So I make my prayer to thee. And we do lift our prayers to thee, O Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now, there's one last song I'd like to share with you all, and it's a song that we don't sing in Children's Chapel, <clears throat> but it's a song I'd like to share with you. It's called Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And we want to be open in our eyes to see God's love in all of creation. Open the eyes of my heart. God bless you. Go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of God's name and love. God bless.